morning, good afternoon, guys. We're back for another Geek Tavern. As always, it's me, Sean, and I'm joined by Mike Hello. and Aaron. It's me. And uh, I haven't that? watched a damn thing. I tried watching <laughs> nothing. Oh, I tried watching The Abyss on Amazon Prime, and while I commend Amazon for having a lot of obscure movie choices, they still have like the VHS rip of the movie that's okay. in four by three, Ew. and I just can't get through it. Like I got halfway through it. I got halfway through it, and then I was like, "All right, I'll finish this tomorrow." I was like, "How long is this?" It's like two hours and twenty minutes long. And it's essentially close encounters underwater. Yeah. Hmm. But I was like, I was like, why is this so long and why is it a VHS rip? Ugh. Like that's yeah, that sounds terrible. Uh, that's about it. I played Squadrons. Yeah, I've played some some Squadrons, but uh, it's fun. Yeah, I uh, can't wait to try that. I, I definitely recommend it to anyone who's got thirty bucks and any console or pc to play it on. wait wait sorry 30 bucks don't you mean 190 bucks so that you can get the throttle and uh, joystick attachment as well no 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 oh, I it, totally no no, no. it's 190 bucks just for the joystick <laughs> and throttle oh, my mistake. not the game <laughs> the game is 30 i thought it was only well, the game's 40 it's only 30 because you have friends that work at walmart oh yeah i guess you're right <laughs> boy how i am lucky uh, but i i'm I'm considering getting the throttle and joystick attachment just because I want to try it out because yeah. I could see myself. I used to like playing those games. Like we had a computer game where it was a flight simulator. And we had a joystick when I was younger. Yeah. I love the shit out of playing that. Have you guys ever seen that Xbox game that has like a full on like mech console? I forget mech uh, something. I forget what it's called, but um, they actually had one at VGX a couple years ago. Oh, that's awesome. And it was like 150 bucks, and me and my brother were this close to buying it <laughs> because, like, it's crazy to. I mean, it's it's a full. That's like, awesome. it would take up my whole table over there, like to set it up. No, that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, that's what it made me I, I I mean, I definitely like. I, I know a little bit about flight controls, so like, I would. Yeah. I think I would enjoy playing a Star Wars flight game more with a. I mean, you can't get much model. more. Yeah, authentic more authentic than that. Than that. Yeah, because it's all first person. You're in the cockpits, and I, I feel especially like, if you get the VR. Yeah, which yeah. I would love to do, that, but Xbox doesn't make the VR yeah. yet. Which I hope. Well, they have the, uh, which is another reason like I'm considering getting a PlayStation is because I really want the helmet with the VR yeah. and get their joystick controller to play that because I think yeah. that would be sick. There's a new version of the VR coming out for PS5 in the future. It's not like announced yet, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. We have. Really uh, I, on the other hand, have have watched probably more stuff than most. Um, I found out from the last time of recording that my sister had not seen Infinity War and Endgame. Oh my god! Yeah, I don't know how I let that happen for so long. Um, so we sat down. Uh, I think it was Monday and Tuesday of last week. And went yeah. through the uh I mean she's the, she's obviously not seen the emotional roller coaster that is Infinity War. Well, she, you didn't withhold the uh, end game from her for a year. Yeah. <laughs> no, nope, like we had to wait like the rest of us. Yeah. <laughs> I figured instead of a year, twenty four hours was long enough. But 24, 24 hours is long enough after uh, Infinity War because you're right. You have to process it mm -hmm. at least for a little bit before you go <laughs> I, um, into. Uh, <laughs> she, you know, she doesn't have the connection. Like, what's so special about those movies is the connection of all those years of build up, seeing the movies years, year by yeah. year and year. Well, ten plus years. Yeah, eleven years. So she didn't quite have the connection. Um, I mean, I'm not ashamed really to say it, but like there were certain parts of Endgame where I still teared up, not so much out of sadness, more joy, if it, you know, compared to anything. But... I, I still cry at the end of The Office. <laughs> so don't feel bad. But yeah, so that, that was one thing. I feel like there was something else I watched. Oh, um, I forgot to even tell Sean this. Um, I, I did... 
we sat down and watched Pineapple Express. Oh, good, good. It was, yeah, it was on. We Netflix. just watched that recently too. Yeah, like about probably a month ago. Well, we were talking about, you know, the fact that nobody's really picked comedies. Yeah, and I had mentioned that one, and he mentioned that you guys had just watched that recently. Oh, I love that movie. So I, just, I was like, we want me and my brother and my sister wanted to watch a comedy, so we we watched that. It's pretty funny. I I mean. I Man, think I've laughed. It. None of us have really picked a comedy. Yeah, not even <laughs> Suburban Commando wasn't even a comedy. It was laughable, not, not but it really, wasn't meant yeah. to be a, a comedy. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. I'll probably have to maybe think of one in the future. But um, I, I think that's all I've watched, uh, with the exception of a Godzilla movie. But that's next week. Uh, the, the boys. I rewatched the. Oh, yeah, I rewatched right. the boys with our friend uh, Livy. Well, you know Livy too, right? Uh, but I, <laughs> for for anyone listening, yes. Uh, she had only watched the first episode of the boys, so we finished the first season with her, mm. and then she's gonna start season two. But uh, this coming Friday is the end of season two. Oh, I'm wow. excited. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be insane. I can't wait for it. But uh, I mean, that's that's about all I've all I've really <clears throat> kept up with. Um, yeah, like I said, Squadron. This has been like a nightly thing. I just hop on and play the. There's an awesome like training area where uh, you can do all sorts of stuff. You can uh, the training area is actually awesome because you could literally just fly around there for hours, switch through different ships, cycle through different ships, and everything. You can switch from Rebel to Empire, use all their ships. And then, depending on what side you're on, you can, like, uh, deploy enemy squadron one, deploy enemy squadron two, and, like, fight against fighters to practice your dog fighting. Mm. Or you can deploy flagships or, like, raiders and stuff like that. And let me tell you, you going up against a Star Destroyer on your own is ass. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, not only does it have, like... When you play Battlefront and everything, you're like, okay, it's got shields, but, you know, I can still take it down. Now, you have to destroy, like, every turret, every missile launcher on that ship before you can even take down. And you have to take out its tractor beam. You got to take out the lower shield generator. You got to take out the communications array. You got to take out everything on it in order <laughs> to destroy it. And I'm like, this would be so much easier with an, with an extra uh, squadron. Yeah. But, no, it's just me trying to take down... <laughs> A Star Destroyer in my A-Wing, which, by the way, A-Wing is a superior fighter. No, yeah. what anyone says. I'm surprised that they haven't made, like, you know the VR game where it's like a uh, Star Trek simulator? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm surprised they haven't made one of Star Wars yet, where it's just like, I don't know, like a battle... uh, um, simulator, I guess. Like, because I mean, you just be like the whole basically deck. what this is. Yeah, so but like it? more involved with other people. Oh, like, like on like, deck. Yeah, like yeah, like you're on the bridge or something. Right. Yeah. Maybe it's because that Star Wars isn't all involved with like the bridge and the, the technical side yeah. of things. They're just kind of like it just shows like a bridge with like I wanna be thirty that, people. Yeah. Want to be that guy that does the? Oh yeah. <laughs> Engaging the tractor beam. Yeah. I mean, not to say Star Wars isn't technical, but they just don't focus on it. Yeah, that's like, not the focus. Yeah. yeah, it's more hey, like like I mean, they do stuff like in Return of the Jedi where the guys like he's like our shields are lowered on the Super Star Destroyer, and he's like intensify the forward batteries. I don't want anything to get through, and they're just like firing at this Y wing or this A wing that's spiraling towards the bridge. <laughs> the guys like intensify the forward firepower, and then it just crashes right through the bridge. <laughs> it's like man. I mean, like, yeah, it's not technical. It's it's flashy. It needs to be flashy. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking of um, Marvel, and I have some Marvel news. I don't know if you guys have heard this or not, but um, there's speculation that um, Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire have been approached to be in the new Spider-Man because it's oh, been confirmed yeah. that... Uh, Jamie Foxx is going to be in it. Right, I as forgot Electra. about that. Yeah. So people are speculating. That like, it's multiverses all coming together. Yeah. Oh, it, I, you know what? It, it, better. It, it could because Spider Verse opened that door. If because it, they talk about things that happen in both movies. Both really. movies. Or yeah. Both, yeah. Or both series of yeah. Sony movies. So 
what better way? And honestly, it's saving face for Sony because they cut away Raimi's. Then they were going to do a third building the Sinister Six with Andrew Garfield. And they're like, nope. Because like both of them failed in their second or third act. And they're just like, mm. like, what better way to save face and be like, no, it's all part of something. Like, yeah. That that's that's smart on their on their part. Do if I, they're just like, hey, it's it's all connected. It's okay. Like, don't worry, we had this plan. It's like, no, you didn't, yeah. but I'm glad that you're doing it. The this. only thing I need from that, if it's just, if it is true, is when they're done saving the world, I just need a shot of Toby Maguire with Kirsten Dunst, like at home with a child or some shit. Like that's just what to I tell need. Tell us that Peter's life. Yeah. Went okay. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't need her. I don't need her in like the whole movie. No. <laughs> but I just I need that. Yeah, it would be interesting if that happened. Like, how involved would they be or not? But I I think that's an exciting idea. Oh yeah, <laughs> because I like. But it has to be happening because why the hell else would you have Jamie Foxx come back as Electro? Well, yeah. and, I don't see the point in that. Well, and uh, this next Spider-Man will take place after, excuse me, Doctor Strange 2, which is the multiverse of madness. Mm, so, okay, yeah. And yeah. that's a Sam Raimi, which tells me that he might have Toby make a cameo in there yeah. that could lead into Sony being like, hey, let's put this together. Because uh, here's, here's the way I'm looking mm. at it. How else are you going to get people excited for Marvel again? Yeah. They don't care. No. No one cares. And I'm one of them. No one cares about what happens in the movies anymore. You have to do something big like that to drag us back in because that's the shit we want to see. Yep. And if you do that, I will go back and sit in the theaters <laughs> and watch your movies. Yep. And, and it's, not that, it's not that they make bad movies. It's just I don't care. You gave me everything that you built up to, and I'm like, okay, I don't care if I watch Black Widow. I don't. I'll watch the yeah, TV. I really show. don't care. I really don't care, though. Yeah, I am. I am excited for the TV show. The uh, what was it? Wandavision trailer looked pretty good. Wandavision, uh, Cap and Falcon. I'm of course excited for. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I don't know if there's a trailer for that. Or Falcon but... and the Winter Soldier. There, there isn't a trailer for it, but no. there was like the little teaser stuff with mm-hmm. it. Ah. Uh, but I'm excited for that. WandaVision, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, the TV shows I want to be hyped for, but the movies... like I want to see like Doctor I said, Strange too. Yeah, because like I said, once you open up the multiverse and you start giving us things from the past yeah. that we want... <laughs> yeah, the, the title alone, I guess, does have me excited. I just never really thought about it. Well, everyone's been making jokes that they're like, oh, they got Sam Raimi to direct, which means he's just going to take the money and make Spider-Man 4 <laughs> that never actually end up getting made. And I was like, that's a funny joke. And then now they're talking about all this Spider-Man shit. And I'm like, oh, maybe he is actually going to do something with Spider-Man in this. I can't wait to see Bruce Campbell's cameo. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I want him to be a multiverse uh, Mysterio from a different Earth, yeah. yeah, he should just be Mysterio from Earth three sixteen or Earth six sixteen. I just want him to be a different Mysterio, but I want him to be Mysterio. Yeah, because I'm not saying uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Gyllenhaal didn't do a bad or did a bad job, but Bruce Campbell was going to be Mysterio in that. Which that would have been mind blowing too. That would have been awesome. Yeah, he could be Mysterio with actual magic powers. Yeah, and not just. I mean, nothing. There's nothing wrong no. with how they. I actually appreciate how they did it in uh, Far From Home, but yeah, Far it just be, Home. Yeah, it'd be interest. It'd be cool to see it with actual magic powers. I guess just Bruce Campbell in general would be great. Bruce Campbell with magic powers would be pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, magic powers in Army of Darkness. <laughs> Only if he said the words right. <laughs> um, some more movie news, as I'm sure we're all aware of. Everything being pushed back till the end of time for Dude, the fifth no time. time to die. No time for theaters. No yeah. is, uh, is what no time for James release. Bond. Yeah, no time for release. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, time to die. <laughs> what was um, Batman too? Was got pushed back. Pushed back. Twenty twenty two instead of twenty twenty one. Yeah. Now they're gonna have to change the uh, the awesome. Uh, 
release card at the end of the trailer <laughs> to question mark zero question mark question mark <laughs> yeah seriously yeah it's uh it, i'm not surprised anymore but it still sucks yeah to hear all this you know yeah, it's terrible it does because we were finally looking forward to some movies next year that we got trailers for this year and uh Jalen shared a funny meme today. It was from uh, Uncut Gems. Mm. And uh, it was... Oh, shit. Who's the basketball player who gives the, the the stone or the watch to or whatever? In the movie? Yeah. I can't. Why can't I think of his name? Uh, I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> Kevin Gardner? Yeah. It was, uh, yeah. It was, and he... Uh, he says, why did you show it to me if I can't have it? <laughs> like, <laughs> and it was like it, literally everyone thinking about movies right now. <laughs> it's like, yeah. quit showing me the trailer if I can't have it. <laughs> Which, I'm the opposite. Show me a trailer, but show me a new trailer with new footage so I, so I can get more yeah. hyped for it and be excited. But don't show me trailers that are better than the movie. That's like Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. <laughs> Or Terminator <laughs> Salvation. Yeah. Well, I didn't watch the trailer for Rise of Skywalker, so I wasn't See, disappointed. Well, I was disappointed, but not <laughs> a different, a different, <laughs> a different way. Oh, I was, I was completely, like, blindsided. Yeah. Uh, no, if I show you the trailer, you'll be even more disappointed because you'll be like, wow, that trailer made it look actually good. Eh. And then it just turns out it's not. Yeah, I wasn't entirely convinced in the first place, so... <sighs> Somehow you saw something coming that we didn't. Like <laughs> almost like you went to the future. Oh. You like that? That's or the, the really. or the past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not, not entirely <laughs> on board with that, but alright. Sorry, I'll have to go back and kill the writers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if we're done with that, we had a recommended movie that we all watched this week. We sure did. By Mike and uh yeah. <laughs> the Time Machine. The Time Machine from 2002. I'm not sure who's directed by. Simon Wells. And Gore Verbinski. Simon Wells? Gore is, Verbinski. Is he... Uh, <coughs> Harrison? Is, is he a... Uh, what should we call it? A, a relative of H.G. H.G. Wells? Oh, I was Wells? thinking... Harrison. Moore. Harrison. Moore. <laughs> but um so yeah, so um I'm just going to read the the quick little paragraph explaining the movie. Um scientist and in, inventor Alexander Hardigen, I didn't know he had the last name. <laughs> Did they say that? Um is determined to prove that time travel is possible. His determination has turned to desperate or desperation by a personal tragedy that now drives him to want to change the past, testing his theories that a time machine of his own invention. Hardigen is hurtled to the 800,000 years into the future, where he discovers that mankind has divided into the hunter and the hunted. That's a quick synopsis. That is a very quick yep. synopsis. Pretty good rundown, though. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really give too much away. Yeah. So that'd be a good way to explain the movie, but I assume that everybody has seen it, so... Yeah. <laughs> We're assuming too much. Um, <laughs> yeah, well... Uh, I, I said to Mike, because, like, watching the opening... Uh, credits and everything for this movie i'm like why wasn't this marketed heavier like i remember a lot of movies that were marketed back then and i'm like why wasn't this hev more heavily marketed like this is a, this is a timeless book no pun intended uh, <laughs> but this is a timeless book yeah that it I, looks very well and known. and it has it has a pretty good cast and i'm like yeah it does why was this not like yeah. more blown up where everybody's like hey it's the time machine like we know you were spoiled with Back to the Future, but come watch this one. Yeah. And it's like a big movie, too. Like, it, is, it yeah. looks expensive. Yeah. 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 For the time, I'm sure. Well, they had Stan Winston's Creature Design Studio <laughs> doing yeah. it. So, yeah. Yeah. It the was, budget was, it was kind of a. Budget was 80 million. Yeah. Really? About, well, you got to think it was almost 
It was 2002. It's almost 20 years ago. Yeah, but still, it looked more expensive than $80 million. Yeah. That's still a lot for them. Yeah, I, Maybe it's just me, but like the production design was looked incredible. Like whenever they were in the past, like it was like that whole walk was like horse drawn carriages. Mm. Like it was it looked Oh yeah. It yeah. looked just like you plucked it right out of history. Yeah. And then even more when they go into the future and there's those like things hanging on the cliff faces, like oh, yeah. it looked great. Everything about it looked great. The, there's only one shot, I guess I'll bring this up now because we're talking about the look of it. There's one yeah. shot where he's walking up to the museum, the museum, the futuristic museum, and like when people go by, you can just tell they're walking that from it, a green screen. <laughs> yeah. Like it's probably the worst shot I've seen in a long time. Because like the matte painting of the uh, museum, the lighting does not match like the people who are walking in front of it or anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I mean that's, but that that aside, like could have could have been worse. Yeah, could have been worse. It seemed like uh, it kind of jumped around a lot on me, though. Like, so, like you get his motivation and everything in the beginning because his uh, fiance gets killed. Spoilers. And then, yeah. <laughs> oh. <Wow. laughs> and uh, we just said personal tragedy. We didn't say that it was a Batman esque muggings and jewelry. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and yeah. then, uh, so four years goes by, and he creates the time machine, and he goes back in the past, and then he, you know, saves her. But then she dies anyway. And then <laughs> I, I wanted more from that. Like, so he goes and saves her once. And then he just like is sitting there. He should have went into madness and done it like 40 times. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. did they just like, did he do that and we didn't see it? Or because he jumped from like w- saving her one time and she died anyway to talking to his friend. And he's like, I could go back a- as many times as I want and nothing will change. Yeah, that it's was like, like well, the lazy ha- way to do it. Yeah, yeah, you haven't really proven that. You just kind of like are assuming that. Yeah. I wanted, and I'm sure that it would it would have made a movie longer and I, whatever. I wish I would have. They might not have like wanted to extend I, it anymore, but you could have seen him like, it could have been just like a montage of her yeah. dying. Like, it seems almost I, comedic, like dying brought, a bunch of different ways. Yeah. Like a happy death thing. Yeah, kind yeah. of. But I brought this up to Mike. I was like, why doesn't he just get her and pull her back to present? Take that past her before she dies and bring her back to present instead of like trying to save her in the past? I don't know. Because if if she's going to die there at that time, by pulling her to the present, you created a new timeline because you removed her from that entire timeline to be killed and put her in a new timeline with him. I'm like, why didn't he just do that in the first place? Well, they explain why at the end of the movie, but... Do they? Yeah, the the guy, the uh, Jeremy Irons character, he says... He gives him the answer because after he can't, you know, he decides it's futile. He wants to know why he can't change no, the past. No. And he goes in the future. Yeah. And Jeremy Irons' character is like, you can't change the future. You can't save her because if she never died, you would have never been motivated to make the time machine in the first place. So you never would have made it. Thus, you can't go back in time to save her. Yeah. No, I get that. But what I'm saying is he creates a new timeline by removing her from that timeline. So he almost avoids a paradox by removing her entirely. Therefore, he can still have the time machine to go back to the present, but remove her. I mean, we we could go on for days (laughs) now talking about the paradoxes involved. But like I was thinking he could do that, though. Theoretically, he could do that. I don't know what the consequences would be because of it, but he theoretically could be like, Hop on, and then they like go back to the present, and then she get killed by a horse or something as soon as she gets. I off was gonna the say, I imagine she just die in the present. <laughs> she like... just gets off and just. <laughs> it's just like, huh? Yeah, just pulls her <laughs> I mean, at that point, or she would just disappear or something. Yeah, at, at that point, you could just be like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, they should. That's one thing I've always thought with this movie is. That, they should have shown him trying a couple times. Yeah, they don't have to be a, a bunch. I but... wonder if it would just get comedic. That's what I'm to saying. To an extent like, where people are just like, what the fuck is this? Like maybe, <laughs> maybe it would be taken as a joke, but it just seems kind of like lazy for it to be like, you saved her once. I mean, if he's, if he's physically freaking out about it while doing it, I don't think it would be comedic, but... Oh, I'd be laughing, though. 
Yeah. Because, like, every time it'd be, like, something, and then she, like, slips and, like, breaks her neck or something, <laughs> or, like, gets impaled by, like, uh, something. Like, and I'd just be like, like, I'd just kind of be, like, chuckling, like, dude, it sucks to be you. Especially with her, <laughs> if she had an overdramatic death scene, like, when she got shot by the bullet. Oh, my God, was that hammy. She's like, <laughs> the, the, the slow motion, like, I love that, like, three frames per second where it's like, <laughs> like, and the gunshot echoes, and then she goes, like, flies back. Yeah, oh, that was a little hammy. Yeah. Yeah, and then her not even being able to get, like, another word out, <laughs> like, as she's bleeding out. Yeah, I didn't understand why the death was so quick. Like, it was just one day. It looked like he shot her, like, right in the heart, though. It does, yeah. So... So, I mean, they, I was like, okay, I buy got that. that I buy that, that, that she could have died that quick. But then in some, like, you don't see directly where it goes, but you see, like, the blood splatter. And I'm like, she gets shot in the shoulder? Like, why is she so... <laughs> Come on, relax. I get it. It's 1899, but I think you're going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the Civil War. He didn't just shoot you with a musket ball, for Christ's sake. That's true, I guess. So, was it established that... Andrew is working, or Alexander was working on uh, time travel before that, or was it just? I like, assumed that. Like, yeah, I assumed that he's always had a thing for time. Yeah, you know, with all the well, watches yeah, with the watches. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, maybe. I just assumed he always had a thing. I don't know if it specifically says or not. Yeah. Well, like, because what he, he has a fascination with time, but I think it's it's her being killed. He wants to go back and change that. So I think that. I would assume that sparks the thought yeah. in his head. But the time he, machine they, was really cool. They thing. allude to it, though, that he was working on something kind of like that. Because Mark Addy's like, hey, they want you to like do something practical. And he's just like, eh, practical is bullshit. I don't know I if you guys caught to... this or not either. but uh, Mark Addy? No, oh. <laughs> not Mark Addy. But <laughs> Mark Addy was saying, like, why, why do you pay attention to this German uh, crackpot or whatever? And he's like, Mr. Einstein, Einstein yeah. has a yeah. lot of neat ideas. So that's yeah, another thing that with uh, Einstein's theory of uh, relativity. Yeah. So like I had, I definitely <laughs> had like the, they gave me the illusion that he was working with time yeah. type of stuff before that happened. And then that just like propelled him into. I mean, okay, he might have just been out working on do. the theory. Yeah. But I think the time machine then he itself. Put it into, yeah. Yeah. Which the time machine was cool. It I, did I look did, really cool. I did think it looked pretty cool. Uh, the only thing I, I can't wrap my head around is when he travels through time, like, so it, it stays at that level, like ground was rising and lowering. Mm. Like, what if that cliff would have been right under him in the future? Like, yeah, that's another thing that just like makes no sense. Yeah. So whenever he goes into the future, like you can, like he sees the world changing around him. And it just so happens that he, like, spawns in, like, two, what is it, 2031 or something? 2030. Yeah, in, in an alley. Yeah, right? in an alley. Yeah. Like, how, what? Well, that's supposedly, right, where his house was. Yeah, but, whatever. like. No, I know. <laughs> like, what are the odds of that? Yeah. Like, uh, and so he's traveling through time. Is, like, the world unable to interact with that section of space that's what i mean like, yeah like is it is it something to do with that like because it's there the like plants won't grow in the same exact spot that it's there or whatever. yeah it's not really explained yeah but... it, it, yeah it's not touched upon at all <laughs> it's just like oh yeah it's, it's perfectly fine don't that's worry. why i just don't i don't think a, a stationary item oh you know? and that was one thing I said to Mike when we were watching it and uh, they were talking about the lunar luxury apartments or whatever. And they're like, don't forget to tune in for the 20 megaton detonation. And I'm like, are you insane? <laughs> I'm like, you're going to fucking blow up the moon. And I said that to him before, like it even started. Yeah. Then it cuts to the future. And I'm like, what, World War Three happened? And they're like, they screwed up the thing. I'm like, no shit. You detonated a 20, 20 megaton nuke on the moon. <laughs> what do you think was going to happen? Yeah. It's all dust. That was really cool, though. Oh, it, it, it was really great, cool. though. Yeah. And then especially when he's in the future. Yeah. And he looks up and it's the moon just completely like. It's like an asteroid belt at this, yeah. point, at this time. Yeah. That was really cool. No, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So yeah. That, that, so that's one of my favorite things about this movie is. Like the first time he uses the, or well, not the first time, the second time where he actually goes to the future, 
um, like how it pans around his whatever workshop. Yeah, but it's like got a word and I his lab. Think. Yeah, I was thinking like greenhouse thing. Oh yeah, I don't know what he calls. Oh, it. and it shows everything like building, but like all, all the vines are growing and then it grows flowers and. Also, that's the other thing. Like when he's going through time and everything, he's basically in a bubble, and time is spe- sped up around him. He's there in the machine. Can no one see him? That's that's you don't know. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like to anybody who comes in, they should just see him just sitting in this car thing, just staring straight forward like an yeah. idiot. Yeah, not being like, able to like move or anything, and they're just like, "Hey, like, yeah, like what's going on?" Super yeah. slowly, like when he turns his head, it yeah. takes him like five years to turn his head or something. Yeah, right. Yeah. So like they should they should just see that, and it like and it makes me think that they just build everything around him. Like, <laughs> hey, what's up they'd with that guy? They make him like an <laughs> attraction. Yeah, yeah. They're like, "What's up with that guy?" And they're like, "Ah, oh, he's been here for like a hundred years." We can't move him or anything. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. okay. Well, yeah, because it... <laughs> he should, like, whenever, like, at the very end, when Mark Addy and they're like, we have no idea where he's going. I'm like, he should be there. Like, Technically, the... yeah, he yeah. should be sitting there. I'm like, he didn't just, like, he's sitting there watching time move around him. It's not like the DeLorean where it goes, and just, like, zips Boom. into a different timeline. He's there, stationary. So they should just walk in and just be like, he's still sitting there, huh? Yeah, it's been a week. He hasn't eaten or anything? Nope. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's how it should have been. Yeah. That's one. Of, uh, yeah. So that's, that, that's kind of one of my realizations from, I mean, it's been a couple years since i watched this. But I, I'm like, there's not, not that there's a lot of practicality to, like, Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. But, like. It's so much easier to wrap your head around. It. You're like, okay, boom, he's there. Yeah, yeah, because like, they explain it. Like, like I, I think the difference between Back to the Future and this movie is that time travel is like essential to the like story. Mm-hmm. Where in this movie, it is important, but the like in a way, Back to the Future is a story about time travel. This is a story about like. Alexander coming to like it's him grieving like it's a yeah. it's like him accepting what has happened to him like and you know it's it's more of like and, and a finding, character study finding solace type of thing, almost yeah. it, whereas in Back to the Future the whole point of the movie is time travel yeah. this one is just kind of like a plot device to forward Alexander's character progression yeah yeah in a way. So they hardly explain it in this movie, where in Back to the Future, Doc explains. Yeah, it's time it's like right. it's laid out the rules and everything. Where this one is just kind of like oh, I can go back and forth in time, blah blah. blah. <laughs> yeah, crank, crank, crank. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So I, not saying that I I don't like this movie anymore or anything, but it's when you think about a lot of the stuff, it's like. Well, that makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> I liked uh, the CG was a little rough. Yeah. Like whenever he was going forward in time, it looked like Sim City, Like, <laughs> like you know, like an advert for Sim City where it's just like, and these like skyscrapers are yeah. like being built. I thought it was kind of cool looking, but at the same time, it was like. It was dated. Yeah. And yeah. you could tell like when the Earth's uh, like evolving, like you, you can tell there's a lot of the, like, bad CG that takes yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it, it's overlooked. Like you're watching it, and you're just like, whatever, you know, it's yeah. fine. Uh, and then I, I mean, I mean, there's really nothing else for us to say as far as him going to the future in New York. Well, he's he's in New York the whole time. Yeah. Was but, that was that girl? He. I'm thinking it was. Was it her? The same actress. Yeah. yeah. I I couldn't tell. Wait, the girl in New York? No, it wasn't the, the same one. No. No. <laughs> I couldn't tell. It would, if it, was... been, it would have been smart if it was. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, honestly, if anything, it should have been her that he met with the tribal people, or whatever you call them. I don't know. What they yeah, call. tribal. Yeah. Um, not that I dislike uh, that girl that played. I don't know her name. I can't remember. Mara. <laughs> Mara. Mara. Yeah, yeah Mara. Like that. Yeah. But uh, 
Kate Mara. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, like we should just dive into the. Well, I liked the, the, I liked it in the future version, the twenty thirty version, where he goes into the museum and he's talking to. Oh right, yeah. Uh, whoever that is, Orlando Jones. Yeah, Orlando Jones, and uh, I think it's kind of it's a little uh, suck like patting yourself on the back. At a point, because he's like, because Alexander's like, oh, time travel. And he's like, time machine, yes. A novel, novella of H.G. Wells yeah, H. and then yeah. I, Isaac Asimov and then like all these things. And then he's like, oh, t- t- tell me about that one. It's like, oh, yes, it was a film adapted by such and such. And then again, and then they start talking about their own film adaptation the that they are currently, currently happening. <laughs> like, yeah. I thought that was kind of like, <laughs> oh, they mentioned this. Yeah. I, I thought they only mentioned the 60s one. They they did mention the sixties one, but they said it was adapted twice. Oh, okay. And they were referring I didn't to yeah, and then he they're... started to mention self reference their own, and oh. then he's like, no, no, and then he's like, practical application or whatever, and, and I like uh, he he's just like kind of an ass, Orlando Jones. Oh yeah, because yeah, because he's like treating him like a child, like okay, science fiction weirdo, you know, yeah. like and then. Later on, when he meets him again, he's like, you asshole. He's like, you did do it, didn't you? Like, <laughs> Which is insane, by the way. So after he leaves the museum, he's like, oh, yeah, I'll find out in a few more hundred years or whatever. And then they blow up the moon seven years in the future. And then he gets knocked out and he travels 800, like 800,000 years into the future. That's insane. Yeah. He goes I'm pretty so sure far. a second ice age happened. I think. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah, because, that, like, well, that's why there's two races, right? Because some of them live in our ground and some of them. Yeah. When he gets knocked out, I'm like sitting there, and the whole time I'm just like, mm, like, because it was just making me like anxious. I'm like, you're going too far. <laughs> right. like, you're gonna wake up. You're gonna reach the heat death of the universe. <laughs> yeah, you, <know? laughs> you better wake up, or else you're you're toast. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna die. He, like, stops the time machine right in the middle of the sun expanding so that it's, like, it already engulfed Earth or whatever. Yeah. Just burns to death. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he gets to this... The... Well, what wakes him... Sorry. What wakes him up is is the Ice Age. Yeah. Cause oh, he, yeah, he, like, freezes. He gets, yeah. gets cold. Yeah. Yeah. And then he wakes up, and then they st- strangely don't strip apart his time machine <laughs> as some kind of yeah, they don't magic. Even, like, pay, they don't, no, they don't pay, pay no mind to it. They're like, they yeah, cool, him, whatever. It's like, oh, let's get this guy to safety. And they don't, they don't even bother to, like, mess with it. Nobody's, yeah. like, nobody's sitting there with a spear, like, poking it or something. Like, no, nobody busts any knobs off or anything. It's just perfect. They're just like, man, whatever. Yeah. yeah. I and like then, how they ask him, like, they're, like, threatening him. They're like, where'd you come from? Yeah, where, because, well, where are you from? Yeah, uh, he's like, calm down. Uh, eight hundred thousand years in the fe- uh, past, and they're like, "Oh, he's a moron." <laughs> oh, he's well, she a... just tells them that. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, which she's is like, why oh, she's so idiot. trusting of him. Um, like, I don't know. Maybe it's because he doesn't look anything like them, and the fact that he speaks the stone language fluently. Yeah. Like, like who else? Who else would speak that language so fluently aside from someone who was there? Right. Well, that, and we'll get to the. Uh, I don't. The th- only other person who speaks that language just as well as he does. Yeah. If not better. If not better, yes. Right. <laughs> uh, and then we, we we get to the point where we meet the Morlocks. Morlock, yeah. Which are these creatures? And I, I, I'm going to tell you right now. That the fight scenes between them and that, and I felt like I was in a fever dream. <laughs> like I, I was like, "Can I wake up? This is getting weird." Like the faces made me uncomfortable. Oh, which yeah. I mean, they're, they're supposed to, but I also imagine you want to sell tickets to this, and you don't want people like going, "Oh, that's weird." So I mean, like they, their faces made me uncomfortable. The way they moved made me uncomfortable, and then the fact that it's a daytime battle taking place on a, like a windmill and everything when he's fighting with it i'm like this is what is going on here like i was sitting here thinking i was drunk and I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like no i'm not watching this am i you weren't in love with the cow roar oh that's another thing i want to say this movie loves stock sound effects absolutely loves the shit out of stock sound effects because i heard so many sound effects where i was like wow 
they just opened up Pandora's box. I was going to say, stock, I was gonna say it, it, because I said it looked expensive, I was like, man, could they afford a folio? They must, I was going to say, they must have ran out of money with it, like all the uh, <laughs> production design because. They they had that same cow roar probably like not not, not even joking yeah. like close to a hundred times. Oh, easily, easily. I was like sitting here like oh my god if I hear that again I'm gonna <laughs> fucking kill myself. Like make make it original like sound effect. For yeah. That. Don't just use that. Slow it. Slow the pitch down or something. Like don't make yeah. it as Ooh. obvious. Ooh. And then like half the screams were just stock screams. Yeah. Uh, Oh, I mentioned to Mike, if you watch someone's feet while they're walking and listen to the sound effect, it doesn't match up. <laughs> like, it's like on a keyboard where it has the, F- the SFX kit yeah. where you, like, hit a sound effect. Like, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like someone hitting that key mm-hmm. over and over. And it's just going... <laughs> but it's not matching up. So did you notice at all, watching it off that streaming service, um, did the audio, like, go up and down? No, the mixing wasn't bad. Okay. okay. Because, like, my DVD... When like, he goes into, like, the big uh, steel mill thing that they're in, like, the like all the audio just, like, drops. Yeah. Like, it's like, what? All the level, like, everything just... It was weird. It must be my DVD. I mean, maybe the mixing's bad on the DVD, that but could it, be. it wasn't bad the way I was. Like, it, it was noticeably louder at certain parts. And not, not just, like, dialogue, or, like, just... Everything. <laughs> I was getting a lot of Hellboy throwback vibes with the way that the monsters looked and moved. And actually, Doug Jones was one of them. Yeah. Uh, he was like the spy one, I guess. But uh, like all the monsters felt like they were out of Hellboy. Yeah. Like they did, they felt like they were from uh, the market that they go to in yeah. the Golden Army. They look like it too. Yeah, like yeah. They, they look like they could be just like pulled straight out of that movie and yeah. just reused or something. But. Uh, they were interesting enough. They were just kind of like you. They never established like they were pretty weak for mm-hmm. being these big hulking monsters. Like yeah. Guy Pierce, like hits him with like a stick, and he goes like flipping over and everything, <laughs> and like, yeah. and then he can like kick him and everything. And I'm like, that thing weighs like 300 pounds. How can he just like? And then he like punches it and it like rolls off and like does all this. I'm yeah, like, whenever he get it, whenever he kicks it off the windmill, I thought it was gonna die. And then it looks like, like it wakes died, up yeah. again. It was like, all right, whatever. And then, like, obviously, they don't have to explain everything, but like the darts that they were like stabbing them with, and, yeah. like, obviously, it was like they were following them because they could smell yeah. it or whatever. Oh, right. But I don't know. It was just. And then, whenever they finally meet with uh, Jeremy Irons, <laughs> it's just like they hardly explain like their dynamic. Okay. It's like, oh, yeah, we've. We have a caste system, and we evolve differently, and that's, we've been bred to evolve differently. That's what happens when you introduce your villain the last five minutes of the movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, like, I, I saw Jeremy Irons pop up on the credits, and I was like, yo, I was like, that's cool. And then I was looking up the movie, and I saw that he was the uber Morlock, and I was like, ooh, he's going to be like the big bad guy. And then... uh as soon as he walked down the stairs and I heard Scar's voice, I was like, oh, there he is. And he was like doing Scar's voice. Yeah, exactly. Like straight up. Yeah. So like, I was like, oh, okay. And then he looks like the dude from Underworld. Yeah. And <laughs> I don't know, it was just kind of like, I was like, oh, he's a, he's a white walker, but he's also very fluent in English and intelligent. Well, yeah, he. That's I mean, part of his you, telepathy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, he's t- telepathic. Yeah. And then you could see when he's walking around, like you saw his spine, it yeah. was his entire brain. Oh, yeah. Like his brain went like from the top of his head down, yeah. like traveled down his spine, which was pretty cool looking. Yeah. yeah. But you'd think that him fighting Guy Pierce in the time machine would make him extremely vulnerable <laughs> because his. It's not like encased in bone, it's just like. It's like, oh, there's brain and then his flesh. He could just punch his brain or something. Oh, and then that was the other thing we were talking about. <clears throat> when he's... Because they, they show this at the beginning of the movie. When he loses the locket, he watches it age in time yeah. and then, like, disappear. And, and when he goes to catch it, his nails, like, grow really fast. Yeah. I didn't see that. But... Oh, yeah. When he catches tries to catch the locket. Yeah. It, like... There's a burning sound. Yeah, because... 
like his hands outside of the bubble. Yeah. So his his nails are growing, but it's also like burning his hand. Um, but uh, we were talking about this. He's like choking Guy Pierce, but he's out of the bubble. You'd think he was. Yeah. Yeah. So he's holding on to Guy Pierce for like thousands of years until he just disintegrates. Yeah, because he I had it like, full. What? He had it like full force. Yeah, he had yeah. it going like for thousands of years, and he's literally just like I just imagined uh, there could be a whole other movie where it's just him on the outside of the bubble, just like Mm-mm. nope, not letting go. I don't think that he could let go at that point. Like, well, yeah, like like he could like tell his hands to let go. Yeah, but being like, in the bubble, he's he's literally traveling. Like it would take. I don't know exactly how it would work, so, but like as soon as it gets to this point of his heart arm, it would be like, oh nope, gotta gotta wait to catch yeah. up to that. Yeah. So we were talking also on top of that, from from Jeremy Irons' point of view, is it going like super fucking slow? <laughs> like, yeah, probably. Is it going just normal time, and he's just like, uh, yeah, he's just uh, he's like, like well, this, I'm, is, this is miserable. <laughs> I'm relegated to die now, essentially. Couldn't like, somebody come along and like cut off his arms or something? Like another one. He was like hanging off. over a pit, though. Come on, they could have in that thousands of years. Somebody could have built like a platform <laughs> out to him and just started like sawing off in his forearm. <laughs> but that's what I mean. That comes back to the yeah, why yeah. can't you see him? Right. Because he's hanging there for like a thousand years until his arm disintegrates and falls off. Like, was he just so stuck like, in this position and he couldn't see yeah, his forearms? Yeah. Did, did guys just walk in and they're like, what's the boss doing? He's just floating like, there. <laughs> yeah. Been floating there for a couple weeks. It's like, oh, is he going to telepathically tell us to do something? No, probably not. It's just like, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. But you're not supposed to think about that. Yeah. Yeah, but I would. I, I am thinking about it and I want an explanation. <laughs> no, I, I understand. I totally and understand. And then... He, like, keeps going forward in time until he reaches uh, Darkseid's Mordor uh, realm of Earth that yeah. happens in, like, 8 million years or something like that. Or it was 7 million years. What Was it, like, 7 million years ahead? Yeah, I mean, his and counter that, was, like, the whole way ticked up almost. Yeah, yeah, so it was, like, it was, 7 million years ahead. Yeah, basically the, the other race took over. Yeah. They took over, but they also didn't do anything yeah. in, like, a million years. So, like, I said that to Mike. I was like, man, they really didn't progress at all. Yeah. So then he comes back and destroys the time machine, but it only kills morlocks yeah so that was interesting so he like it, do, it there's absolutely no explanation he's just like if i jam this watch into the cogs it'll only kill the morlocks yeah <laughs> it's like I don't, it, it's kind of like an ant like an ant hill yeah like an ant system but yeah the time to- like the so it's like traveling forward in time and then because of the watches there it's you no know, stopping the time machine in present day when it's supposed to be theoretically moving forward in time because we don't know the science behind it exactly, but then whenever it finally breaks, all of that time that passed just poof, like explodes out. Yeah, and it, it uh, I guess it just like goes through the tunnel systems. Which why doesn't it like even when it like shoots up and it almost gets Guy Pierce, but like it just like shoots straight up into the air. Like why doesn't it? It makes no sense. No, no, yeah, no. How did he know he was, it was going to do that? You know? Yeah. If, but that's not the point. The point is yeah. him sacrificing his ambition to save his uh, former um, fiance and just staying eight hundred thousand years in the future yeah. with uh, the Eloy. Which, which I mean, like it's fine and everything, but like I, I would, I would go that. Me personally, I'd go that far to the future and be like, "This sucks." It does, suck, and I right? and I just be like, "I'm going back." Like, I'm going to miss the moon explosion and everything. I'll be dead long before that. I'll just go back and hang out with Mark Addy for a while until I die. <laughs> you know, it's just like, I'd be like, nope, like reverse. Or even just go a little bit in the future. Maybe not till, yeah. not to the 2000s. Go, go into like, I don't know, 30s, 40s, I don't know. 60s. Something, yeah. Yeah, just like I'm a hippie. I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry. I wouldn't want to go back to living the Neanderthal life. 800,000 years in the future. It just doesn't seem... But I mean, I guess he'd be kind of lost 
in the future where there was all this technology and everything. I mean, he would love it, but he would also just be like, yo, I don't know. Yeah, that, that's one point on. that I really like whenever he, he does. I, what's his name? Mr. Filsby? Yeah. He's like, oh, Mr. Filsby, you're right. We did take it too far. And yeah. he looks up at the exploded the moon. moon. Yeah. yeah. Like, he's like, yeah. And I think that's kind of like, it, it's kind of funny when you think about it because like back, I guess not. When, when was the time machine originally written by H.G. Wells? Like 18, probably 1880s. Yeah, because like in the 50s and stuff, the future was always like this bright, like, ah, oh, yes, we're going to have this, like, our, our society is going to be so much nicer and everything. And then there was but, a period, too, where technology really boomed, yeah. like for a period of 10 years. And then it all of a sudden stopped and it was like, hmm. And then Did we uh, go too far. But now it's like we look at the future as like, oh, technology is going to eventually screw us over, which is essentially what Mr. Filsby was like saying. And that's kind of the point of uh, H.G. Wells' The Time Machine too. It's like eventually the you know technological advancement it's going to de- essentially destroy the Earth, mm-hmm. which is what they did with. You know, blowing up the moon and everything, yeah. and uh, and kind of like the actual time machine as a metaphor is like, well, it's going to destroy the world, yeah. see, which see is interesting life. because I you never really see that perspective from before, you know, the nineteen fifties. I yeah. I agree with you. You know, that's a nice touch where he's like, well, we did take it too far, and it's like. Yeah, you did take it too far, but not through technology because you had the bright idea to detonate a 20 megaton <laughs> nuke on the moon. <laughs> like like that, that's just that's just, who did did Donald Trump authorize that <laughs> in the future? Was he just like build the moon 20 megaton nuke? It's going to be great. Tell them like <laughs> like yeah, but that, that that's what I mean. Like who the hell authorized that? Who was like, "Um, uh, no, that's bad." Like that will never work in a million years. We're gonna kill ourselves. Let me tell you, doing it, was. it was Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> they should drill the moon instead. Uh, Send uh, Bruce then, Willis. Then up put there. the nuke down there, and yeah. then crack it open. <laughs> Send Bruce Willis in and drill into the moon, and and make their tunnels for their condos on the moon. I don't know. That's like I think that's what they were saying, but that's only ten years from now. So, oh, good. Can't wait. Space Force get on that. Yeah. Better get to cracking open that moon. So the book was There's moon gold in the (laughs) mills. The book was written in eighteen ninety five. Okay. Okay, so Can you imagine how like this dude is psycho. Yeah, right around the turn. I don't know how much of of the book is actually adapted in this movie. Yeah. There's probably a lot of Uh from what I read on Wikipedia said it's loosely based on the book. So I'm like I'm sure I'm sure that it's like I'm sure there's not like crazy monster well no it, it makes you want to go back and read making cow noises i know that the murlocs are actually like a part of it so oh okay like because they were part of the original 60s at ad- a film adaptation so mm. yeah why didn't we watch that one i don't know if i ever finished it myself to be honest i've never seen it but i do know that they're a part of it yeah there's like uh th- this movie reminded me of a lot of those old uh and I don't even know what the production company was but there was a lot of those Jules Verne or maybe it wasn't uh no Edgar Rice Burroughs movies that they made back in, like in the 60s at the Earth's core with Peter Cushing and Doug McClure like it reminded me of that because it was very much like these primitive societies where some guy from the future or whatever is <laughs> comes down to this primitive society and has to like fight off all these crazy monsters. But then mm. there are other higher tier monsters that are like uber smart. We know what to do. And then it's like this whole evolving thing. And it's, it reminded me of that. Like it had yeah. that feel like, especially when they were going through the tunnels and everything. I was like, Oh, okay. This really feels like that type of movie, but better, better done. Yeah. Like, better executed. Quality. I don't have anything else to say on it, really. Oh, well, I, I do want to say the score reminded me a lot of The Lord of the Rings. <laughs> See, I was reminded a lot of, like, James Horner. Uh, James Horner Avatar, as well as Mighty Joe Young. 
because hmm. James James Horner is very good at doing the. How, I don't know the best way to put it. In Mighty Joe Young and Avatar, he does like a good um, African musical yeah, tribal. tone. Tribal, tribal tone. Yeah. yeah. He's very good at doing that. And that's what it reminded me of. Like when he goes into the future and they have like. I thought that it, yeah, it was good score. because it emulated the time well. Yeah. And uh, it it's composed by the same person that made the Pirates of the Caribbean score and uh on zimmer i don't think that was on zimmer this guy's name was like klaus but the stalt or something like hmm. that i don't recall him being attached to pirates of the caribbean um, i checked it the other day and it was well i think you're wrong <laughs> stand by we're looking at us <laughs> All three of us. No, I'm I'm not. Last <laughs> okay. adult. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean: Curse of the Black Pearl. The first one. Mm-hmm. Then Hans Zimmer did the other ones. Then I think. Uh, I don't know about that, but yeah. He anyway. Did, yeah. In any case, it did uh, remind me a lot of like I don't know. It was like high adventure sounding yeah. at parts. And then whenever he was in the future, it was tribal and all that. So two through four. Okay, but huh. he did do the first one. I'm surprised. I thought that was entirely Hans. But uh, overall, I did not. I did not not enjoy this movie. Yeah, no. no like was... I said, there were parts that were I was like, "This is a fever dream," and I want to wake up. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was enjoyable. It, it, it's it's definitely segmented. Mm-hmm. It's like the beginning of him in the past. And then even the middle section of him traveling forward in the future. And then the final act of the movie is him in the far future with the Murlocs and all that nonsense. And See, I, I have an appreciation for pretty much, the, I would call it the first two acts. When he gets to the 800,000 years in the future part, I don't care. <laughs> like, yeah, it kind of lost my, me a little bit. Yeah, my appreciation is for the beginning Part of this and, and, and you know what? I think it, it kind of. I'm with you on that to an extent because it kind of does just take you out of it because you're thinking, oh, he's gonna like. Well, you can't do possibly. This. And then he's just like, like maybe like, it's different for us because we live so close to like 2030. Yeah, it's like the first and the second act. Well, 2030 and 2002 was like, holy shit, that's yeah. really far away. <laughs> yeah, it's relatable to us because. We like we can relate to the f- past and that pseudo present mm-hmm. because it's only ten years in the future for us. Yeah. But eight uh, hundred or eight hundred thousand years in the future, we can't relate to that. No, we we've can't never we never lived a tribal lifestyle like that either. So. Right? Yeah. Well, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was glad to to have suggested this. Uh, like I said, it's been a couple years since I watched it. And, it was a good watch. Yeah. yeah. I will happily give it a 7 out of 10. I will give it a 6 out of 10. I think I'm I'm actually... I was thinking of throwing out that 7 as well. Yeah, I really... I just, like, was blown away, especially in the first and second act. And even the third act of, like, the production design. Like, it was like... It felt like I was there in New York in 19-whatever. Yeah. 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 No, it was just, production design was very good. Um, I felt like Guy Pierce wasn't giving it his all. Yeah, he did seem a little reserved, but yeah. But I don't know if it was him or the quirkiness of the character as well. I I don't have any. I don't even know if, if I know another Guy Pierce movie. Iron Man three. Iron Man three. Yeah. Oh, was he in there? He yeah, was, he plays uh, the villain. The villain. Yeah. I've only seen the Iron Iron Man name like a couple times. What is his name? I don't remember. Oh yeah, I, okay, yeah. It just boom. I can't. I, I didn't realize that was him. Yeah, he was the extravagant guy. Yeah, I saw this like many years after <laughs> Iron Man three. So, uh, oh, he was Mister Wayland in. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Prometheus. I I, never, I haven't seen it yet. Well, know. anyway. Yep. Then, there we have it. We have another recommendation on our uh, yeah. on our docket here. Yeah. I'm, I'm, 
gonna flip a coin here. I can flip a coin. On which one? Do you, do you have a spooky season movie for us? Yeah, I do have a spooky season movie for us. All right. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you have an actual coin? Because I literally have to flip <laughs> for this one because I really don't know which one to pick. Uh, so my recommendation this week, since Mike said that none of us have recommended a comedy oh, so okay. far. Two bird, one stone. And uh, <laughs> I have a bad and feeling about this a already. A spooky season movie. I have chosen <laughs> Mel Brooks' Young Frankenstein. Oh, good, good. <laughs> no, I was not going to suggest that. <laughs> 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 but in hindsight, I wish I should have. Damn. Can we go back? No, no. It's set in the time machine. (laughs) Yes, so Young Frankenstein is what we're going to be watching. Perfect. All Um, right. A spooky comedy. Starring Gene Wilder. Yes, indeed. But maybe it's going to go Disney Channel like under wraps or no. Oh, God, no. No. Boo of Medea Halloween. (laughs) Actually, it was Ernest Scared Stupid. (laughs) 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 I knew you were thinking of one of the two. (laughs) I would have been fine with Ernest movie. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for listening or watching uh, to our discussion today. We hope you enjoyed our talk about the time machine. We enjoyed talking about it. If you don't want to be spoiled for Young Frankenstein in our next podcast, make sure to watch before then. And I guess we'll see you next time. Goodbye.